So I'm doing another walk and talk podcast today. And if you're following along on YouTube, then you can see the beautiful scenery of the uh, Rivington Reservoir system. And if you're not, you just have to put up with my voice and the sounds of nature. So today I wanted to talk about the dopamine system in the brain and how gardening makes maximum use of that amazing feel-good chemical system in the brain. So everybody knows of dopamine as the feel-good chemical. And most people tend to think of that as the chemical that's released in the brain when good things happen. Actually, it's the chemical that's released in the brain in anticipation of good things happening. And that makes all the difference when it comes to gardening. So let's just first consider one of the most highly optimised machines for stimulating the release of dopamine and that's the slot machine and the reason the slot machine works so well is that the reward is quite considerable it's something you're really going to anticipate happening and that's winning but that reward you anticipate it coming because you anticipate it when you pull the lever, when you wait for the symbols to spin, and you watch them click into place. All of that anticipation gradually builds, but then the result is unpredictable. And it's that unpredictability that keeps it and makes it so addictive. So it's the powerful anticipation of a reward in the future and then the unpredictable access of that relate of that reward if you always got the reward so you always won on the slot machine it would get boring pretty quickly but because you're not quite sure whether you will or you won't get that reward it works powerfully and it's a very very strong addictive feeling of well-being although only in the short term because we all know we don't want to get too much pleasure from gambling so let's put that in the context of gardening and particularly edible gardening I think and probably flower gardening as well so the anticipation of a harvest starts very early. And it starts with picking out the seed, right, the seeds that you're going to grow, sowing those seeds, nurturing those seeds, and all that time you're thinking and anticipating the harvest. And dopamine is being released in low levels whilst you're doing, whilst you're anticipating it. The dopamine release gets stronger and stronger the closer you get to the reward being achieved, to the harvest being achieved. And let's take, for example, the firsts of a year. So the first peas, first sugar snap peas, or the first strawberries. And you see those first flowers and you think maybe next week I'll be picking peas, but no, they're not ready. So the reward isn't delivered, the anticipation's there, but it's unpredictable. Is it going to be this week? Is it going to be next week? Is it going to be tomorrow? Is it going to be the next day? And then finally, you get that first taste of pea, or you see that first flush of red on that first strawberry, or that first little embryonic little cauliflower bud little cauliflower flower and you think oh it won't be long now well, that first calabrese 
or that first little sprout or that first apple that falls into your hand from the tree so that I think is why gardening is just so incredibly powerful the dopamine system is one of the most powerful systems in the brain it provides incredible good feelings incredible levels of motivation and gardening seems perfectly optimized to take advantage of that system and the unpredictability of the harvest date and of the harvest quality is a really important part of it and something you should really embrace so you should really spend time anticipating that first raspberry that first gooseberry whatever it is that you really love really savoring it really looking forward to it really thinking is it going to be this week that when I squeeze that gooseberry it's going to have just that perfect amount of give in it which means it's ripe and ready to eat and then your hopes are dashed and you have to wait another day or another two days or whatever it is but that is not a negative it's that anticipation and disappointment which really maximizes the dopamine system and keeps it active keeps it rewarding you day after day year after year and this is why I think growing your own food in particular and eating seasonally is so incredibly rewarding because that sense of anticipation of having the first beans or the first radish or the first strawberries or whatever it is is really quite considerable when you haven't eaten them for quite a few months and when you don't have the option of going to the shops and it's even more powerful when you extend the season because when you extend the season you're pushing the boundaries you're taking a risk so you're putting more effort in that means the reward feels that little bit greater but also it's even more unpredictable you know when you grow things in season everybody gets that first strawberry at the same time but when you extend the season especially when you go early in the season and you're thinking is it going to be the middle of May or the end of May or early June depending on the weather and how good you are as a grower and uh, yeah it just makes that unpredictability element of it that little bit more powerful so anyway hope you like that little bit of neuroscience my name's steve this is the seaside kitchen garden and allotment channel if you're watching it and it's a bonus episode of the gardening week podcast if you're listening to it and i'm going to sit down and edit this video and enjoy the view.